Let me ask you about that because the time you spent incarcerated, what did you learn? What did you learn in those situations, whether rightly or wrongly, how you got there? What did you learn having to spend that time incarcerated? Because one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you, I'm like, yo, to me, you one of them legends. Thank you. I appreciate that, too. To me... Some people, and I don't care if this is on YouTube, anywhere, they're going to see this. They're going to be like, uh, they, they might hit with up. Uh, I'm like, y'all, it's unfortunate I got to say, but if you weren't there, maybe you weren't there. But like, your music career got cut down by some legal issues. Mm -hmm. Of course. Like, you know, we don't got to sit here and pinpoint it, but. Without some of those issues that were setbacks, we're probably having this conversation about a lot of different things. Absolutely. And that has to weigh on a man. Absolutely. And how, you know, regret's a hell of a thing. Absolutely. Because, you, you know, as we go through life, you get, you get one opportunity to make decisions, right? <laughs> For example... Say, I don't know, I'm walking down a, a, a alley. I get slapped by a crackhead. Right. But I got a gun in my bag. <laughs> I shoot him. My whole life just changed. We're going down a different path. Mm -hmm. You got incarcerated a couple times. Absolutely. And I think certain people looked at him and be like, if you ain't get incarcerated there, bro, like you would be... How do you how do you rationalize that? How do you think about all that? Um, outside of my incarceration, right? I saw a lot of things. You got to understand who Fetro the person is, right? Fetro the person. I'm a cancer. I was born June 26, 1990. Naturally, I'm a caregiver. I'm a lover, right? You my dog. I love you, dog. You my bitch, I love you. You my friend, you my neighbor, I love you. That's naturally, right? I wasn't willing to sacrifice me and my friends, my immediately family, for a dollar because money is paper. You know what I'm saying? Our bond is priceless. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not willing to put us in a situation as to where I can make $30 million. Okay, look, you sit in a room. I'm going to give you a better example. You sit in a room with your friends, right? Let's say you plus five of your friends, right? And somebody walk into the room and say, hey, act, I'm going to promise you $50 million in the next 10 years. But everybody in this room would die except for you and one person of your choice. Would you take the money? Absolutely not. People say, oh, man, Dirk's scared. He turned to Muslim. Oh, he praying a lot now. Oh, he want to be positive. Nah, dog, it's enough death. It's enough. I'm paying lawyer fees. I'm sending you commissary money. I'm making sure your children got book bags, Jordans, pencils, notebooks, paper. Got their hair done. Shape up. I'm making sure all these things, these ain't my children. Let me ask you a question. Was there a moment that you thought, I, 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 I don't know how I like to ask this question because me, I'm a person, I, have, I, I do have faith, but I, but I also think being incarcerated exists to break you as a person, to break your soul, mm -hmm. to strip you of that pride and ego. At any time when you were either locked up or you felt like you were going here and then ah, they dragged you back there, did you feel like defeated, like it's over? Um, 
like it, 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 to the regular person watching this, they can't even understand what, what it's like to just wake up in a cell for multiple years, right. not knowing where your future is going to lie, when you're going to get out. Right. How do you maintain sanity? Um, I well, you just asked me two questions. So which one would you prefer me to? All right. So first. Um, how do I maintain sanity? I wake up and put one foot in front of the other. You feel me? Wake up, get on the phone, call baby girl, check on the kids, see how your friends and family members doing. That's first and foremost. Um, secondly, you know what I realized when I, my, my more mature self when I went to prison? Who gonna protect my kids, man? I got three kids Two baby mothers out there. My first baby mother passed away in 2010. I've been a single parent for 14 going on 15 years. A lot of people don't know this. My baby mother died back in two. My first baby mother died in 2010 from a heart attack. I found out I was a father at 20 years old. My daughter was already three. My baby mother was already dead. I didn't miss the death, the funeral, everything. My mother called me, pulled up to the crib. Here, you got a three-year-old and it's a girl. Like, what? No, nah, you got a three-year-old girl. Come on. She wrote it in her diary. You want to take the test? Take the test. But this your daughter. Damn, where her mother at? She dead. She died. Her grandmother, too old to raise her. It's on you. Right? So, boom. I've been a single parent for that long. That's first and foremost. Now when I get locked up, right? Who going to protect my daughter? Who going to do it? You know what I'm saying? These is now you get to the age where you realize the decisions that you're making, it's not just about you no more, dog. You feel me? God forbid, DJ Academics go to jail tomorrow. What your dog gonna do? What a camera and niggas gonna start selling cameras, start selling arts. You know what I'm saying? They gonna start thinking for themselves, man. Act ain't never coming home. It's over with. You get what I'm saying? So the decision that you make, it's not just about you no more. And I believe that that's what come with being a grown man. That's what come with being an adult. Thinking for others. You feel me? You tell yourself when you go out and you drive, when you drive, you ain't driving just for yourself. You got to drive for some people on the road too because motherfuckers don't know how to drive. Well, that's everyday life. You got to think for others. Man, fuck that. Man, that nigga's a bitch-ass nigga. I'm telling you, I'd smack the shit out of that nigga if I see him. All right, well... You probably ain't going to do that in real life, number one. But number two, should I go off on a limb and start uh, posting all my guns and chopsticks on Instagram knowing that these people watching me? Should I start doing that? That wouldn't be good. Absolutely not. So it's about what you want to do. And, that, and that's the question you got to ask yourself. Prison humbled me, man, for real. It really humbled me. Humbles you in what way? Because I, I, I've heard people who said... They even came on this podcast and said, yeah, if this was a couple of years ago, I ain't going back and forth with you too much. Mm -hmm. If I'm making a point, you saying some dumb shit, nigga, you, not, you ain't been there with me like that, nigga. What's up? What we doing? Mm -hmm. It's a lack of conversation. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. You got to understand, too, Act. You keep it running with you. A lot of these niggas just want to go viral on camera. A lot of these niggas just want to get their clout up. A lot of these niggas bookings is slow. Um, these niggas ain't really getting the money that they claim that they is. They ain't really making the money that they pretended they pretended they making. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these niggas just really want to go viral, bro. And it's sad, but it's the God's honest truth. Niggas is chasing clout more than they're actually chasing a real dollar right now because they look at clout as that's bigger than money. Right now. Well, I mean, and I think this is where, like, you know, this is an interesting, like, inflection point even for you, right? Cool. You're on the interview act. You could come on here and be like, man, uh, let me just tell you what really happened. This happened. My homie shot this nigga right here. <laughs> you know, I ain't going to lie to you. Keep it real. Yo, we shot at that, that other nigga who been dissing. He dissing me. 
Yeah, you thought we did nothing. I ain't said nothing, but shot him three times. <laughs> Ask him where his car is at. The little red sable he used to drive it or whatever. <laughs> that Mercury, like we handled that. Absolutely. It, and I'm not going to lie. Everybody would be really intrigued. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. And, 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 and again, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm putting it towards, you know, you've done some time and just realize. Why the fuck would you ever go on a podcast and go say that shit? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, or, or maybe you just knew that from the get go. But I do know now. Let me tell you this: I be watching some podcasts, and 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 you know, even you know, people love to say, "Yo, the Warren Shy record was crazy." Yeah, I w- I was going off what people were tweeting. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, nah, because niggas been saying a lot of tipping. Yeah. Wild, oh, crazy yeah. shit on the net. King Vaughn was one of the craziest. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. He, he spoke his mind. You. But let me say this, right? Not to go off track, right? Yeah. I, let me say this, right? All jokes aside, right? On some real shit. Let's use Sosa, for example, right? When we first started rapping, a lot of people thought Sosa was from D.C., a lot of people thought Trail was from Chicago. Yeah, the diss songs dropped at the perfect time. And this dude got hit, diss song dropped, bah, wow, we blow up. Man, there's millions on the line, pop, pop, pop. Whatever, whatever happened, whatever went on, right? There's so many niggas dead and gone. These is real people that are dead and gone, bro. A lot of times people look at entertainers and look at rappers and it's like, yo, this is just somebody who I support on my iPhone. I might go see him in concert. I may never go support him in concert. A lot of rappers don't act like that, though. You see what you're telling me right now? A lot of rappers don't act like they feel pain and hurt and suffer from grief and It's loss. a part of their facade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my best friend died last night. Fuck it, man. That's what come with the game. Yo, it's the life we chose. I, mm. I remember covering the Warren Chirac. Man, again, I didn't even know. Yo, when GBE Capo passed, and I remember, remember I'm on Twitter and people were tweeting out the last moments of his life. Man, I shed a tear. I, I was like, yo, this is fucked. People up. made fun of me because I was recording myself on a plane on the way to Cap's funeral, and I was crying on a the plane. They made that a viral moment and made fun of me, but... I was really crying because Cap was actually a good dude with great energy. I ain't never met a nigga from the trenches, right? I'm from the trenches. I ain't never in my life met a nigga from the trenches who hooked me up, excuse me, with a real family member. That never happened to me before a day in my life. I'm just giving you a small example of how Cap was, right? Cap was like, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I want you to fuck with my cousin, dog. I'm like, so, you know, it threw me off. I'm like, what you mean, bro? You offering up your cousin? He's like, nah, like, I'm telling you, Grace, I feel your vibe. I feel your energy. I know you ain't going to fuck my cousin around. Like, 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 even if you don't want to take her serious, I know you would be real enough to keep it 100 with her like that. I'm just giving you an example of what type of dude he was, you feel me? Because I seen the things that, that you was reporting on, like, you know, when, when he was popping up at the restaurant with the ski mask and all, you know what I'm saying? And all, and like I said, crowd is a hell of a drug and it was a lot of beef and a little turmoil and shit going on. But I say that to say, that was a good nigga, son. That was a good nigga. He crossed the street to see them dudes to take a picture in one of the most dangerous cities in America. Niggas hopped out like, hey, maybe try to get a picture. In his heart, he knew he wasn't supposed to go try to take that picture. But at the same time, I'm from the trenches, man. Niggas want my picture. I'm going to go take the picture. And it went down like how it went down. You feel what I'm saying? But I say that to say, niggas lost real people in this shit, dog. And you might look at blood money as a character. Who are you? Where are you from? Bitch, I'm glow as you dog. You listening to the rap music. Nah, man, that was a real good, genuine nigga, man. I done woke up. Four in the morning, my smoke alarm went off, right? Smoke alarm go off. I wake up. This is when I had my one-bedroom apartment in Hollywood. Black is a testament to this shit. I walk up in the kitchen. What the fuck? Blood money in the kitchen. Drunk and shit. My bad, Gleesh, man. Hey, my, man. 
I tried to make some French toast, and I ain't never made French toast before, man. But uh, I was, these is the memories that I have of these dudes. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, but to you, or not you, or to you, or whoever I, I, on the I, internet, I, I, I get it. No, I get it. That's just blood money from Chicago. Like that's Sosa cut. Like nah, it ain't like that. These you explaining just, to me why why why. A diss song ain't just fucking entertainment for people like me. I get it. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're making sense. Absolutely. You're making so much sense. Absolutely. And you can get tricked by the power of a dollar because the dollar is real. The dollar could buy you Lamborghinis. It could buy you bust down Cubans. It could do all that for you. But at what price? It's all a testament to what type of man is you really? Is you really the type of nigga who you willing to get rich by any means necessary? Meaning, are you willing to sacrifice your friends and your family to wear designer clothes and drive fast cars? Or are you willing to slow down and say, nah, what good is this if I can't share it with y'all? I'd rather share this with y'all. I'd rather have two million and share it with my dogs than to have 50 million and share it with strangers and a bunch of undercover homosexuals doing a bunch of wild, geeking, crazy shit. No disrespect. You know what I'm saying? But nah. just being honest. It's a lot of things I'm not willing to do for, for the power of a dollar. I'm just not willing to do it. What's meant for me, I get that. I might not never buy a jet, but I can work hard to make sure we could fly on a jet one day. We could ride a jet one day, but I might not never make it to the point where I could purchase a jet. But we could hustle and work hard and stay true to ourselves and get on a jet, kick our feet up, pop bottles, get my dick sucked, all type of shit on a jet. But I might not never purchase that jet personally. Because I ain't willing to comp compromise my integrity as a man in order to be able to purchase that jet. And I'm fine with that. Man, you've, you've given me like just a new perspective. I done been through a lot. I, I done beat the murder indictments. I done beat all this shit. You feel me? Couple of my homies done lost. Couple of my homies done got killed. I done lost. I lost my best friend, my little brother. My little brother got killed while I was incarcerated. Booster the shooter. I think you might have said some little small comments on Booster too back in the day, but you always knew him to be my little brother. That was my little. That was the Walker Flock of the Gucci. That's who Booster the shooter was. The Fed Trail. I, I, how did how did that impact you? Like, what was those moments like? Man, I lost them while I was in prison, man. I lost them over some small paper as to where I know that shit ain't nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? It was more so about the principle. But I know that that shit wasn't about nothing to him. I missed the funeral. I had to watch my dogs get his hair done. Buy his outfit. Pick the casket out. Mind you, I'm in the feds. I got an iPhone, so I'm on a I'm on FaceTime with with while we getting all this shit together. How do you, like how, how do you process? Like, are, are you trying to make decisions? A lot of niggas ain't never buried their brothers, man. A lot of niggas ain't never got their brother head done for the Yo, last time. Hey, niggas ain't never did shit like that, bro. It so it fucked me up. I'm gonna be honest with you. So I started growing my hair out. When I was doing Warren Shark, I had, I would just had, I could get like just a little fade or like, I just had waves, really. Mm -hmm. I've grown my hair out probably over the last, I, don't know, I think two years or so. And I'm looking up videos. I'm looking up videos. I'm like, all right, listen, because I like to do shit myself. So I'm looking up people, whatever, whatever. And I'm looking up people who could do whatever style. And I look up this one video and this is a woman. And she says, she said, I'm doing my bro hair for the last time. And I'm thinking, oh, this is like a this is like one of the permanent hairstyles. Cause, yeah. cause, cause I'm I'm over here thinking my hair keep coming out. Right. And she's at a funeral home. And she said, My brother got killed. And my job is to get him right for his funeral. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it I couldn't really watch the video. And I never, I never, it brought me down a deep rabbit hole because I never thought about ever that. I said, wait, there's people who have to get the person who deceased hair right. And like, I, I, I think everybody think about the makeup, but I'm like, like she was there explaining it in tears. And I said, 
damn. She's fucked up, bro. Absolutely. When you think about funerals, right, you got to get their head done, shape up, whatever. Their hands going to always show. You got to get up on them, clip their fingernails. You got to really take care of them for the last time. And it dawns on you. You feel me? Especially if me, for example, I'm going to use me and only me, right? We was born poor. We ain't have it growing up. We ain't had that shit. You feel me? So, yeah, of course the slogan is get rich or die trying, and that may be true, right? But when you put yourself in a position as to where you sit, you go to Manhattan and you sit down in this room with this label and they like, yo, I mean, well, shit, if you take this route, I'm going to use God rest his soul. I hate to do it, but I'm just keeping it 100. Yo, man, I mean, if you take the King Von route, like, shit, man, we could, yo, we could have you, us. Uh, fuck it, you mean? Take the King Von route, man. King Von dead, man. What the fuck is you talking about, Holmes? Is you serious? All you're going to do is sign a piece of paper and you're going home to your mansion or your condo in lower Manhattan or Upper East Side Jersey or however the fuck you live in. Nigga, we got to really go back to the trenches and stand on these mixtapes and these diss rec. We got to go stand on this shit, man. All y'all doing is profiting millions and millions of dollars and you put a sneaky two million, three million in my pocket. Well, what is three million when you made 47 off of it? Then you got a nerder. If I get sentenced for a shooting, you are gonna send a letter. You 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 done made forty million dollars off me. You can't come to my city and come to the sentencing in person. Five hundred dollar flight, two hundred fifty dollar hotel. That's seven hundred fifty. Uber to the courthouse, sixty dollars. That's eight hundred and ten. You can't spend nine hundred dollars. To come see me at my sentencing when you've made $40 million off me as an artist, me waging this war publicly on Instagram and on YouTube. 